let's remind ourselves of the difference between finite difference, finite volume, and finite element. So I'm going back to the illustration I had before. In finite difference, remember we have oops, in finite difference when we draw a function, the finite difference stores the values of the function on the grid points. Right, that's finite difference. In finite volume, we draw a function. Finite volume stores the cell averages. These are completely different ways of discretizing a function, representing a function. In finite element, let's see if we draw a similar function, how does finite element stores the function. This is how finite element stores the function. It looks like piecewise straight lines, but can somebody take a guess at what is actually the piecewise linear representation of the function? How does the, uh, how does the thick red line relate to the thin red line I just uh, drew on the screen? least squares. That red line seems to be somehow minimizing the distance, minimizing the average distance in certain way between the, uh, the, the piecewise linear line and the, uh, the original thin line. Right? So this is one way of doing finite element. And this is the primary way we are going to be discussing this in this class. But just to give you a little bit more insight into what finite element is doing, I'm just going to give you another, another demo, also with finite difference. I'm going to try to draw a very similar function as I did before. And this is also a different finite element approximation to the same fun to, to the function. What's the commonality between this approximation and the previous approximation, and what's the difference? What's the difference should be easy, right? What's the difference? It's discontinuous, right? It's no longer, it's still piecewise straight, piecewise linear, but it's no longer continuous across the grid points. But what's the commonality? It's still doing some kind of least squares, right? We are restricting the approximation in different space of functions. In the previous case, we require our representation to be continuous. In this case, we no longer require our function to be continuous, but we are still doing these squares. And in this case, because we are allowing ourselves to minimize the distance between the original and the approximation function over a bigger space because we no longer require to be <coughs> continuous, right? We can get a better approximation of the function, potentially. We are minimizing the distance between approximation and the uh, between the approximate function and the original function, right? And uh, you can think of the previous example as performing that minimization on the some constraint, while this is performing the same optimization without these constraints. And of course, without the constraint, potentially you can get a better, uh, smaller objective function in your minimization. So you can approximate the function slightly better, right? Of course, another way to get a richer space or a bigger space is to just to divide every cell by a factor of two. Any function that is piecewise linear in the bigger, in the in the coarser discretization, is going to be a piecewise linear function in the finer discretization. But the finer discretization has a richer space because there are more functions that does not live in the original coarser space. 